So today we're going to be changing Jethro's dressing. Um, Jethro has a pressure ulcer on his elbow that happened after he had a um, epidural hematoma in his spine and he was paralyzed in his back end. So today we're going to do a dressing change. First I want to go over the material I'm going to use. I'm going to cover the outside with um, this kind of elastic dressing. Um, the inside with a Telfa gauze pad, some cast patty, and some regular uh, rolled gauze to keep it in place. We're using zinc oxide on this wound. Um, we're actually using kind of a moist dressing with putting zinc oxide on the Telfa to keep that wound bed nice and moist and it's created a really good epithelialization and he's got some good healthy tissue under there. So, just going to cut this off and as you can tell Jethro is a old pro. Glad to be free. Okay. And that's what his wound bed looks like. So this is really good. All that pink stuff is new tissue, new epithelialization tissue. So it's healing really nicely and looking really good. So it's working very well. Okay. So because Jethro has a pressure dressing, I'm making a donut and I'm using stockinette. You can buy this on Amazon. This is uh, the two inch and I think I got 25 yards. Uh-uh, no, way down. And I just use about three feet and I roll it back on each other, on its, excuse me, on itself to make a donut. And then this donut just kind of fits around the elbow so that the pressure when Jethro gets up doesn't go onto the sore or the ulcer, but it actually goes onto this donut. And it's worked really well and it's easy, cheap, something that's easy to do. So then you have your donut. So back to his dressing. Now the big thing about this is Jethro has no swelling right now, which is really good, but this dressing is really kind of breaking all bandage rules. Generally speaking, if you have an ulcer here, you really kind of want the bandage to go a good deal above it. The rule of thumb is the joint above and below. However, in Jethro's case, he was having a hard time walking with that big dressing so we've switched to this smaller dressing and he has had a lot of swelling and the dressing stayed in place but there are several techniques to keep the dressing for, uh, to stay in place so that's kind of what we've got going on here so my first step is I'm just going to put some zinc oxide on this dressing and I put a good glob of it because I change his dressing every three to four days or his bandage every three to four days so I want him to have plenty of gunk on it to keep it moist. And then after I've got that in place, the donut just kind of goes around it like that. Okay, so now I'm going to put the uh, cast padding. And this is cotton cast padding. Now I used to think that you couldn't get this stuff too tight because it... Um, rips but you really can get it too tight and you can also actually have too much cast padding and that can cause the uh, leg or the limb to swell as well so you really kind of have to get a good balance of enough padding and enough tightness to keep the donut and the uh, telfa pad in place but not enough that you're going to have any changes in his circulation I'm going to put the rolled gauze on top of it and this just kind of further holds it in place. You uh, can get this stuff too tight so you kind of have to be careful with it. The vet wrap and with the vet wrap it comes in these rolls. I really like the two inch for bandages but I unroll it because it comes rolled way too tight. <coughs> And you really don't want this stuff to have any pressure or weight behind it. You want it just to cover the dressing so that you can't get at it and it stays good for a few days. So I kind of unroll a good bit of it and then roll it back on the spool so that I have more control of the tension of the vet wrap. Let me see these arms. Okay. So just kind of go around the dressing and again you're not wanting this to be very tight you're just wanting it to be a good outer covering to keep all that bandage material in place and he can't fiddle with it and 
And that is that. The other thing is you want to kind of make sure that your fingers can touch in between and that tells me that this is tight enough to keep the donut in place but loose enough to keep his circulation going. So there you have it. Thanks.